discuss about this depreciation efficiency so for this depreciation efficiency small pressure ratio depreciation efficiency has been derived and then large pressure ratio depreciation efficiency has also been derived in today's class we are going to derive some of the component of compressor efficiency now right so i had been uh, told you in last class itself this is the compressor portion right uh, this is the compressor portion uh, in this compressor portion okay we have two different work done one is your isentropic work done and the other one is actual work done right and uh, in compressor efficiency the state is from one to two right the compressor efficiency the state is from one to two now i am going to solve it for uh, compressor efficiency so how it is coming right uh, let us see one by one so for compressor efficiency okay it is nothing but eta c right so eta c is nothing but compressor efficiency it is nothing but isentropic work done of the compressor to actual work done of the compressor right so w a c by w a uh, w a c by w a c so what is meant by isentropic so here in the uh, enthalpy entropy diagram okay uh, w a c is given we just substitute the value so what is w uh, s c it is h not 2 s it is h not 2 s minus h not 1 right divided by and uh, for actual case it is h not 2 minus h not 1 right and then what is by enthalpy formula okay c p into so c p um, both the formula we have cp so just take out cp and in the denominator section we are also got cp so both the cp are getting cancelled and now you are going to write it for total temperature right so t naught 2 s minus t naught 1 divided by t naught 2 minus t naught 1 right so in this take t naught 1 on the numerator so on taking numerator, okay, what you get? T not two years, right? T not one minus one divided by in denominator you left as it is, right? So T not two minus T not two, right? And then uh, we have some uh, uh, input values of this uh, T not two years by T not one. That is T not two years by T not one will be given as since it is isentropic, it is given as T not two yes by T not one all to the power of comma minus one divided by comma. Yes, this is the temperature pressure ratio relation. Temperature pressure ratio relation is T not two yes by T not one is equal to T not two yes by T not one and then comma minus one by comma. Right. Uh, when it is in isentropic, when T naught two yes is in isentropic, so the stagnation pressure at the isentropic stage to the actual stage is equal, right? So stagnation pressure is equal in both isentropic state as well as in actual state. So for ideal state, stagnation pressure and the actual state, stagnation pressure both are equal. So when it is said to be both are equal then we can define this as stagnation pressure ratio right so stagnation pressure ratio that is compressor pressure ratio as p naught 2 by p naught 1 right now we can write this t naught 2 s by t naught 1 as what r o c r not c r not c is nothing but compressor pressure ratio okay you are just replacing this term as compressor pressure ratio whole to the power of comma minus 1 by comma right now you are substituting the formula into this and we are getting that r not c comma minus 1 divided by comma minus 1 whole divided by t naught 2 minus t naught 2 right so this is the compressor efficiency of the uh, engine right for any jet engine this is going to be the compressor efficiency formula right so in compressor there are two different energy has been attained one is your 
energy transformation and the other is energy transfer right so energy is transferred from one state to other state see here we have the stagnation pressure from one state and this same stagnation pressure is attained on the other state by improving its uh, energy level right so that is the energy transfer and then energy transformation is there right for the say energy transformation we have the rotary blades or rotary beams in compressor we have rotary beams all the rotary beams are uh, having uh, some static as well as uh, uh, dynamic okay so all the rotating blades are static blades and the rotor blades so static blade uh, static blades are ideal but the rotor blades are rotating so when uh, rotates when a blade rotates okay so it increases its energy okay what is that energy that is your kinetic energy has been increased or transformed into pressure energy right so this is the way energy transformation is happening on the compressor and then we have energy transfer so i have been told you about energy transfer that is nothing but your enthalpy rate so there is an always a thermodynamic when we are talking okay we have the uh, steady increase in enthalpy of the state in the compressor right so that uh, we could able to write all these uh, derivation we had derived from the enthalpy rate only that is order of the isentropic state and then order of the actual state is nothing but the energy transfer right so this is nothing but energy transfer right and then uh, finally we have uh, component efficiency of uh, compressor right and now we are going to discuss about what uh, combustion chamber right now we are going to derive for component efficiency of combustion chamber yes uh, for combustion chamber right uh, heat is added right heat is added inside the combustion chamber so in what form we are going to add the heat so in combustion chamber both air and the fuel both are getting mixed up right so what we are going to consider is that for air what is the rate and for uh, uh, air what is the mass flow rate so mass flow rate of the air let us assume mass flow rate m dot a be the mass flow rate of air and uh, m dot f be the what uh, fuel flow rate okay so fuel flow rate is found in combustion chamber only okay so what will be the total mass flow rate? so the net mass flow rate of the combustion chamber is m dot a plus m dot a so this is your net mass flow rate combustion efficiency right and then uh, we are also considering the term called fuel air ratio so fuel air ratio is nothing but f is equal to right f is equal to m dot f by m dot a so this is called as fuel air ratio mass flow rate of fuel by mass flow rate of air that is called as fuel air ratio this fuel air ratio is said to be like a 0 0.0025 0 0.0003 that is in uh, micro level right uh, so 3 microns or 4 microns or else uh, 3 millis or a 4 millis we are going to add only that much of the fuel is we are going to add right so depend on the uh, fuel air ratio right your thrust is the factor going to increase you are going to attain the maximum thrust right so this fuel air ratio is uh, going to help for uh, deriving the combustion efficiency also this fuel air ratio is both helpful for deriving the combustion chamber efficiency so for combustion chamber since the it is going to add up and going to write the suffix as eta p that is burning burning efficiency like combustion chamber uh, since combustion takes place i think much burnt out products are coming out so that efficiency of the combustion chamber will be uh, given as a notation called eta b right so eta b is equal to what is that increase in It is nothing but ratio of increasing enthalpy. 
okay inside the combustion chamber right divided by and then increase in enthalpy of the combustion chamber right uh, divided by fuel that is energy supplied in the fuel right so this is nothing but the combustion chamber efficiency so increase in enthalpy rate okay so increase in enthalpy rate is nothing but uh, you are adding the uh, fuel as well as the mass flow rate of air is coming in the combustion chamber so what happens enthalpy is suddenly increased in that particular sense right so uh, we have the entrance right so in the combustion chamber it is from 2 to 3 right so you are considering only the stagnation state 0 to 2 0 3 right and then uh, you are considering the enthalpy rate h not 2 to h not 3 right so what is the increase in enthalpy means uh, your final state of enthalpy is h not 3 right so you are just considering h not 3 and then uh, the increase in enthalpy due to mass flow rate of the fuel and air right so mass flow rate of the fuel and the air has been included at the air so what is that it is nothing but net mass flow rate is m dot a plus m dot a right so this is your net mass flow rate minus okay minus m dot a into h not 2 so what is your initial state it is h not 2 so m dot a into h not 2 right So divided by energy supplied in the fuel. Okay, the energy supplied in the fuel is nothing but mass flow rate of the fuel into its calorific value. Mass flow rate of the fuel by calorific mass flow rate of the fuel into calorific value. This Q F is nothing but C D, right? Calorific value Q F is nothing but C D of fuel. So we are using different kinds of fuel. Like uh, in aircraft, we are using uh, octane. Okay, so octane fuel is used in the piston uh, uh, piston engines, right? And generally, we are going to use in piston engines. In that also, calorific value is considered for burning efficiency, right? That is combustion chamber efficiency. Here is also uh, we are considering this uh, for a, a jet A fuel or jet B fuel. Any category of fuel is there, right? Uh, we are currently using jet A category of fuel for that. The calorific value is Q F, right? And then uh, we are going to reduce this expression. How we are going to reduce this expression? It's very simple. That uh, we can take m dot a from outside in the expression. Okay, we get one plus m dot f by m dot a, right? Into x not three minus x not two, right? So divided by M dot F into Q F, right? And then you are going to divide this M dot A now. So one plus what is M dot F by M dot A? It is nothing. H not three minus H not two divided by again what? It is here, right? That is m dot f by m dot a. So see, I am going to shift this numerator part to the denominator, so we get f into q f, right? So this is the combustion chamber efficiency, right? So we can also have the another formula, right? We have the another formula of our combustion chamber efficiency. It is nothing but theoretical fuel air ratio. It is nothing but to the actual fuel air ratio. Theoretical fuel air ratio to the actual fuel air ratio. It is nothing but it is given as F dash by F. So this was the another formula for combustion chamber efficiency, right? So we had a look upon uh, what that uh, your compressor efficiency, and this is your combustion chamber efficiency. Next, we are going for turbine efficiency.
next we are going for turbine efficiency right so in this turbine efficiency okay let us have this particular thing uh, that is uh, you have the uh, enthalpy entropy diagram of your isentropic state and your actual state so we have actual state it is given in the formula right it's not 3 minus it's not 4 and we have the isentropic state it is given as it's not 3 minus it's not 4 minus, right right and then uh, now we are going to solve for turbine efficiency like compressor efficiency we are going to solve it for turbine efficiency it is very simple that what is the efficiency of the turbine measure? So it is expressed as meta t as a notation, and then it is nothing but actual work done by isentropic work done. Okay, WAT by WST. So what is your WAT? It is given in the figure. Okay, we have h not 3 minus h not 4 divided by h not 3 minus h not 4 s right so in this we can rearrange it as t not 3 minus t not 4 right divided by t not 3 minus t not 4 s right and then uh, you can bring out T not three common outside. You can bring out T not three common outside. So what we get? T not four s by T not three. Right. So unlike a compressor, here is also you are considering the isentropic state. That is T not three by T not four. Sorry guys, uh, due to rain, we have the connectivity issues, right? Uh, don't worry. We will continue with this session now. Right. Yes, uh, we have uh, T03 by T04, yes, that is temperature ratio in isotropic relation. It is given as P03 by P04 is equal to the power of comma minus one divided by comma right and uh, we can also have this state of p not four isentropy pressure stagnation pressure is equal to p not four so your actual stagnation pressure and isentropic stagnation pressure both are said to be equal right and then uh, we can also express this stagnation pressure ratio of the turbine as p not three by p not four Right. So finally, we could express this T not three by T not four s as R not t whole to the power of comma minus one divided by gamma. Right. Now you are going to replace this formula, and you are going to substitute this T not three by instead of T not three by T not four s. Here it is reciprocal. Right. Now you have to write the formula in reciprocal, and you have to formulate this eta t. Right, so T naught three times one minus what it is it one divided by R O T that is uh, stagnation pressure ratio of the turbine K okay, gamma minus one divided by gamma. Right, so this is your final efficiency of the turbine. Right, I think I uh, understood uh, this recap. Right, whatever. The factor discussed in turbine, okay, uh, sorry, uh, compressor, the same is coming here, right? Whatever the facts which have been discussed in compressor, the same fact is working out for turbine also, right? I uh, mean, I am going to explain about energy transformation and 
energy transfer so here energy is getting released in the turbine section right in the compressor section energy is getting added okay but in uh, turbine section uh, energy is getting released see we have the highest level of p03 and we have the lowest level of p04 here right so in the isentropic case itself we are having p032 p04 is that is in your isentropic state but what about the actual state here we have the actual state of p04 right so what about the energy transfer now so energy is lost in the uh, combustion uh, in the turbine section that is not the case like it is not like a lost right it is that energy is transferred the energy is completely transferred so in compressor section you are spending the energy to increase the enthalpy in the turbine section you are not going to spend this particular you are not going to spend right uh, that is you are going to consume all the energies okay from the uh, uh, combust particles so the combust burnt out particles which is moving into the turbine plates it hits on it and what happens the energy transfer takes place right so energy is released in the uh, what the turbine section when the energy is getting released on the thing what happens you are achieving the power right that's how the turbine is working that is energy transfer of the turbine and then what kind of energy transformation now takes place so combustion chamber we had large amount of burnt out products all the burnt out products are coming out from the combustion chamber and it hits on the turbine right so when it is coming and hitting on the turbine on that time the kinetic energy right so pressure energy is transferred into kinetic energy so the kinetic energy of the state is going to be increased right so when kinetic energy is increased automatically speed is increased so the velocity of the out, 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 outlet of the turbine is going to be increased okay still we have to increase the speed right still we have to increase the speed so that we are having what nozzle in the next section so we are going to put nozzle at the end so this is the nozzle part okay from 04 to e we are having nozzle part so in nozzle we have isentropic state and then we have the variable state so i'm isentropically speaking how this uh, nozzle is functioning okay and then uh, we are going to derive the exit jet velocity right then what is the exit jet velocity and the nozzle right and nozzle also the same energy transformation and the energy transfer takes place that it converts all the pressure energy into kinetic energy the energy transfer is set energy is released in the nozzle section okay the principle the working principle of turbine and working principle of but uh, the nozzle is both are said to be the same that is mechanically we can define it as the same function but the thing is dynamically it is uh, working differently dynamically we are having turbine as a stator vanes and then rotor vanes stator vanes are ideal and the rotor vanes are rotating so all the gas particles which coming and hit on the rotor parts and it moves the blade so when it moves down the blade the automatic kinetic energy is increasing so this kind of energy transformation that is rotationary transformation is happening in the turbine but the thing is in the nozzle there is no any rotating parts or vanes in the nozzle so in the nozzle section we are going to have only the non rotating parts in the nozzle so there is no uh, such kind of a rotational energy transformation but rotational energy transformation is said to be found in turbine as well as compressor only and uh, combustion chamber there is no uh, additional kind of uh, what uh, rotational transformation and then at the exit of the nozzle okay in the nozzle we are not supposed to have any kind of rotary motion okay and also the diffusion part right now we are going to discuss about nozzle efficiency that is exhaust or propulsive nozzle 
exhaust or propulsive nozzle so what is uh, that uh, exhaust efficiency so it is given as meta g and then i have been uh, explained in the figure so we have the state from 0 to e right so 0 to v means uh, uh, we have to consider this actual state to actual state to isentropic state so it's not for minus h e s right and then uh, finally we can do this t not for minus t e by t not for minus t e s right now you got to take t not for common outside so on taking t not for common outside in the denominator you get 1 minus so 1 minus t s by t not four right and then what is your z nozzle efficiency now so t not four minus t e divided by t not four one minus right p e by t not four so p e by t not four whole to the power of gamma minus one divided by gamma so this will be the formula because since p e s by t not four is equal to p e s by t not four whole to the power of gamma minus one divided by gamma so this is the actual isentropic relation for uh, temperature and the pressure but for small entry velocity for small entry velocity what is supposed to have for small entry velocity for small entry velocity your pes becomes p right that is uh, the entropy state the isentropic state of exit pressure matches with the static pressure only right as well as p not t that is total pressure at the exit and then isentropic state at the exit and then static pressure at the exit all are equal for small entry velocity engine right so for this case the isentropic or the efficiency that is the propulsive nozzle or jet nozzle efficiency propulsive nozzle efficiency is said to be t not 4 minus t by t not 4 1 minus p by t not 4 whole to the power of gamma minus 1 divided by gamma right now you have to find the exit velocity what will be the propulsive velocity that is the jet velocity so jet velocity at the exit what will be the exit velocity okay so when you get the exit velocity during the time you will achieve the thrust so that exit velocity is very important for calculating this exhaust and the propulsive efficiency okay so why this propulsive efficiency if you know the propulsive efficiency or a propulsive nozzle efficiency we could be able to find the uh, exhaust jet velocity right so how right so next we are going for exhaust jet velocity right now we are going for exhaust jet velocity it's very simple okay uh, first of all you know about uh, the total state right that is your h naught e your h naught e is equal to h e plus right your h naught e is nothing but h e plus c square by 2 so this is as per energy equation i had written this equation right as per energy equation i had written this equation so from this your h naught e is equal to h naught 4 that is uh, you, are meaning, you, you mean that all the total energy is getting same right that is uh, total enthalpy in the nozzle okay at the entrance and the total enthalpy at the exit both are equal right and then you are using only the exit relation and then 
you are going to relate these two relations like h not 4 minus h c. So in this equality, you neglect this h not e. That is, you are writing that uh, h not 4 minus h c is equal to c e square by 2. Is equal to c e square by 2. So now, what is h not 4 minus h c? So h not 4 minus h c is neta j into h not 4 minus h c is right. So c e square by 2 is equal to eta j into h not 4 minus h e s yes, right i think uh, you know get this step so with the help of propulsive efficiency uh, sorry uh, with the help of propulsive nozzle efficiency okay we are substituting the efficiency formula here instead of h not 4 minus h right and then eta j cp times now we are going to write it as t not 4 minus t e s right and then uh, you cross multiply to here so we have c e square one right and then c e square is equal to 2 theta j right c p times right now you take okay you get 1 minus PES by T naught 4. 1 minus PES by T naught 4. So finally, what we get? C square is equal to 2 beta J CP T naught 4. 1 minus PE by T naught 4. That is PES by T naught 4. Hold to the power of Gamma minus one divided by gamma. So this is the formula for determining the exhaust test velocity, right? So in order to confine the formula, we can make square root on the right hand side, right? So this is the formula for uh, exit test velocity in terms of efficiency. That is exhaust nozzle efficiency formula, right? And then uh, now we are going back we are going for discussing this problem right on uh, compressor uh, compressor efficiency so we have to use compressor efficiency formula and then uh, diffuser efficiency formula and then uh, we have to go for solving this problem okay so uh, with respect to various component efficiencies and then isentropic relation we have to use it and then we have to find the uh, calculations. Okay. So, in this, uh, the question is a turboprop engine operates at an altitude of 3000 meters. Okay. The turboprop engine operates at an altitude of 3000 meters above mean sea level. Okay. So, this is going to be your geometric altitude. Okay. It is 3000 meters. And an aircraft speed of 525 km per hour. Okay, aircraft speed is 525 km per hour. And then uh, the data for the engine is given below. Okay, so they have given some of the data. What is it? It is inlet diffuser efficiency. So inlet diffuser efficiency is nothing but theta d, right? And then compressor efficiency, compressor efficiency theta c. And then velocity of air at the compressor entry. Velocity of the air at the compressor entry is what uh, your c1 right so c1 c1 is 90 meter per second and then temperature rise through the compressor temperature rise through the compressor is nothing but t naught 2 minus t naught 1 right so temperature rise through the compressor is nothing but t naught 2 minus t naught 1 that value is 230 degree celsius and then uh, properties of air is 1.4 and then cp is 1.005 right uh, what we have to find is pressure rise through the inlet diffuser right pressure rise through the inlet diffuser is nothing but we have a diffuser stage as i to what right so what is the diffuser stage from the diagram it is i to what in the dual brighton cycle it is i to one so what is your pressure rise now so p1 minus p a you have to find what p1 minus p a 
and then pressure ratio developed by the compressor pressure ratio developed by the compressor is r not c you have to find r not c and then power required by the compressor power required by the compressor per unit flow rate of air so what is the power required by the compressor it is nothing but uh, w c okay so we have to find what w c so or the w c is r w a c w a c okay work done of the actual compressor we have to okay that is uh, power required per unit flow and then the air standard efficiency of the engine okay finally we have to find air standard efficiency need to check right so it, uh, the, the problems given data is given uh, and then uh, we have to calculate on the things i have indicated all the notations okay and now we have to execute the problem step by step so i will be randomly asking the questions okay among all the participants okay uh, to need some of the step answers so what i am going to do is uh, you are going to solve this complete problem okay as an uh, virtual classroom right now first of all what is the main objective we are having and then uh, uh, what are the datas you require that is the case we have to find it, right so for this uh we are supposed to write the given data now we supposed to write the given data so in given data they have mentioned the altitude so altitude altitude is nothing but capital h geometric altitude capital h is equal to 3000 meters that is 3 kilometers right now i required answers from the participants right so i need the data as like pressure at this altitude temperature at this altitude density at this altitude speed of sound at this altitude right so i am going to ask some questions okay so gogul sundar are you there number 18 gogul sundar are you there no response gogul sundar 25 manigandan number 25 manigandan are you there Sir, twenty five percent, sir. Ah, uh, twenty five. Yeah, money under. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Percent, sir. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I I need some details regarding this altitude. So we have altitude is three thousand meters, right? Where are okay. you? Outsider. Hello. Right. Okay, he left off. Hmm. Number thirty-seven. Ramaganesan, are you there? Number thirty-seven. Ramaganesan. Yes, sir. Ah, yes. Uh, Ramaganesan, could you help me regarding this? So, at altitude of three thousand meters, I need pressure, temperature, density, and speed of sound. Okay. Could you check the internet, or uh, could you have any table with you? Yes, table should. Is it possible, Rama? So, some method from. Can you tell me again? Yeah, uh, for altitude three thousand meters. Okay, so look at the video. For altitude three thousand meters, we have okay. to find uh, at this altitude what is the pressure, temperature, density, speed of sound. Okay. I need the values from the data book. Do we have gas tables with you? 
you can see and tell me otherwise you go for an internet and tell me the values okay yeah so present temperature density at an altitude 3000 meters okay type in google and tell me the answer hmm or else you can enter the answers in the chat box so participants who know the answer you can enter in the chat box ramaganesan sir you can also uh, put the answers in chat box right okay i'll note down right don't do Yes, Sandra answer has very good response. Uh, two sixty five point four temperature, very good, Sandra. So two sixty five point four. Okay, it is in Kelvin. No, unit is Kelvin, right? And then uh, pressure, pressure is zero point seven four two three, right? It is in bar, right? Very good. And then density. What is your density and the speed of sound? Density, density is same. Ah, uh. how? Density is uh, zero point seven four two three. Pressure is zero point seven four two three. Oh, density is zero point seven four only. Okay, so zero point seven four kg per meter cube. Speed of sound is three twenty eight meter per second. Right. Anyway, thank you, Santarasan, Bhagiratkan. Thank you, thank you. Now, uh, what we are going to do is, with help of this data, we are going to find the pressurized through the inlet diffuser. Right. So, for this uh, pressurized through this inlet diffuser, you need the temperature. So, temperature. Uh, I means T one. You need to find what T one. Or T not one. Need to find T one or T not one. So you require T not one and the T one, right? So uh, in order to find the T one or uh, T not one, right? Uh, what you supposed to do is here we are going to work it out the uh, Mach number. Right, uh, you need Mach number for finding this uh, T not one and as well as T one. Right, so uh, for this uh, we have aircraft speed. Right, so what is your aircraft speed? That is U. Aircraft speed is taken as U, and it is five twenty five kilometer per hour. Right, but here we have speed of sound in three twenty eight meter per second. Okay, so you have to convert this into meter per second. Anybody? Answer me in the chat box. Convert this into meter per second. Five two five. So from kilometer per hour to uh, meter per second, the conversion to is how to divided by three point six, right? What is the answer? One forty-five point eight three three. Very good, Bhagirat. So one forty-five point eight three. Okay. So one forty-five point eight three meter per second. That is your velocity. Now, uh, uh, what you have to find is Mach number. So what is your Mach number? It is U by A. Right? Could you tell me the answer for Mach number? So one forty three point eight three three divided by speed of sound three twenty eight. So what is the answer?
is 0.444. So it is 0.44. Just consider round up to two, de two decimal values. And now we are going to find total temperature, total to static temperature state that is T01 by T1. Okay. So it is 1 plus comma minus 1 divided by 2 m square. We just substitute the value here 1 plus. So here you have 0 0.2 multiplied by Mac number is 0 0.44 whole square, right? And uh, what is your T01 by T1? What is your T not one by T one? One point zero three eight. So it is that one point zero three eight. Right? <coughs> now you have to find what uh, T not one value and then uh, T one value, right? Uh, so, how uh, could you, uh, how, uh, how did you going to find T1 value? Right? Now you have to find the value of T1 now. How? Okay, you can respond in the chat box. Right, let it be. Okay, let it be. Now, what we have to find is uh, we have to find the section A. So, for your section A, it is that you have to find pressure rise through the inlet diffusion. So, pressure rise through the inlet diffusion. So in this, you have to find P1 minus PA. You have to find P1 minus PA. So you know PA, but you have to find P1 only. Where did you find the value of P1? From the diffusive efficiency formula, right? So what is your diffusive efficiency formula? So it is that P1 minus PA, right? So divided by What is the formula for diffusive efficiency? Initial formula we have this uh, P1 minus P divided by half row C square minus C1 square, right? So inlet velocity uh, minus your C A square. You can use this formula and then you can find the value of. P A P one minus P A, right? So let it be. You don't use uh, this temperature formula, right? You just use this formula. So P one minus P A divided by half rho It is half rho or Yes, half rho C A square minus C one square. Right? So C A square minus C one square. And uh, what is your diffusive efficiency now? It is zero point eight seven five. Right, so zero point eight seven five, right into two. No, uh, so they would be two. Right uh, here, it is in denominator, so it is coming in the denominator. Uh, only thing, rho is.
in a, a small network issue here since it is raining here right so it's only two minutes so we have to finish this at least we will find this p1 minus p h right uh, we just go for this right uh, you have to substitute the value of density uh, density is 0 0.74 right so just substitute the 0 0.74 right and then uh, p1 minus p a and then what is your inlet velocity inlet velocity is given uh, that is uh, 145.833 so 145.833 whole square minus what is your c1 c1 is already given right uh, c1 is nothing but your velocity of air at a compressor entry it is 90 meter per second right so it is 90 meter per second so 90 square right so using this formula just work it out p1 minus p right so then what is your p1 minus p now so 0 0.875 multiplied by 0 0.74 and then 145.833 whole square minus 90 square whole divided by right 2 so you will get p1 minus p can anyone simplify it and tell me the answer Yes, it is 4262.618. Okay, what is the unit? The unit is in Pascal. You have to convert in bar. So, how much in bar? So, 4262.618. Very good. So, this is in Pascal, right? You have to uh, convert into bar. So Pascal to bar, what is the answer? Can you explain again? So for bar, you have to multiply with what? Into 10 to the power of 4262.618. So Pascal has been converted into bar as into 10 power minus 5 bar. That is you have to multiply with 10 power minus 5, right? That is bar. So this is your change in pressure price in the inlet diffuser. Now we have to find for pressure ratio developed by the compressor that is R naught C, right? For R naught C and all, uh, you require T naught value, right? Right. Okay. Uh, it's time up. We will end up the session.